Prepare your estate plan. It takes five simple steps. That is what this video is all about. My name is Tamara Brainer. I am an independent attorney at law in the canton of Zurich. If you like my video, please forward it to someone else. Step one, gathering data and capturing your current situation. Who are you? What is your personal situation? Are you married, divorced or single? Do you have any decedents? Who are your parents? What is your income and asset situation? What assets do you own, including liabilities and debts? What can you bequeath? Step two. In case of a married couple, the division of marital property is decisive. If you are married, the provisions of marital property law apply to the division of marital property. The matrimonial property regime, it could be either separation of property, community of property or community of accrued gains, is decisive. It determines the size of the estate. To whom is the asset to be allocated? To you or to your spouse? What can you hand down to somebody at all? Have you concluded a prenuptial agreement? If there is no prenuptial agreement and the extraordinary matrimonial property regime has not come into effect, the spouses are subject to the regulation on accrued gains. It is distinguished between acquired property and personal property. What is of particular interest here is your personal property. What did you bring into your marriage or inherit or receive as a gift during your marriage? Then let's look at step three, intestacy rules. Who will succeed by law? How much will your statutory heirs get? Are you likely to be survived by issue, surviving spouses or a chest of partners? If yes, you may make a testamentary disposition of that part of your property which exceeds their statutory share. If not, you may dispose of your entire property by will. Issuance estates are often mistakenly believe that they must bequeath something to their siblings. This is not the case. You may deviate from the legal succession by a testamentary disposition. You may make a holographic will and exclude your parents and siblings from the statutory hereditary right. Unfortunately, there is often the misconception that a life partner and stepchildren automatically receive something. This is not the case. Without you taking action, they will be left empty-handed. However, there is no obligation to do so. Let's look at step four. What are your wishes? Who should inherit from you? How much do you want each person to receive? What exactly and when? Already during lifetime or after your death? Your desired distribution often does not correspond with Swiss interstate succession. Step 5. Ask for proposals for implementing your last wishes. Depending on what you would like to achieve, arrangements must be made, complying with the legal limits such as forced hardship. Every situation is different. What fits one person does not work for another. Unmarried partners may be advised to marry to avoid any tax consequences. Married couples often conclude a marriage contract, among other things, to improve the surviving spouse's situation. Depending on the specific circumstances, you may prefer a unilateral or a binding solution. A will can be revoked at any time while a contract of inheritance is binding. 
An executor may be appointed to execute the last will and testament. This will relieve the burden on your hair. As usufruct in favor of the spouses can, for example, prevent the sale of real estate. The surviving spouse may remain in the home or rent it out, and the children receive the bare ownership. In the case of minor children, parents often feel the need to express their wishes to a guardian. Please prepare yourself. Think about what you may bequeath, what your last wishes are, who should receive how much, what items and when. Record your personal and family asset situation. Then seek professional advice. I look forward to supporting you, fulfilling your personal and last wishes to have a peaceful distribution of your assets. Please contact me for a consultation.